Imagine your 10 day old baby was incinerated in a fire that happened in your own home. And for the last few years, you've been claiming and claiming that, you know, you feel that your baby's still alive, your baby's still out there. And six years later, you end up being right? Well, the story's pretty, pretty incredible. The story of Delamar Vera. And I'm gonna go into the details today on it. My name is Rahana, and if you like content like this, court and crime cases, this is the place to be. Remember to hit that like and subscribe before you leave, and if you have any comments, of course, I'd love to hear your opinions down below. So, let's get right into the case. Lucidia Caveras and Pedro Vera were married. They had two older boys together at the time they were like five and six years old and Luce was recently given birth to her newest daughter Delamar Vera and she was absolutely adorable with cute cute dimples and during the time that they were about to leave the whole the hospital that she had the baby in you know Petro was having a hard time understanding what he was really consenting to and not consenting to so he did not sign the birth certificate so he was not on the birth certificate of Delamar. This is very important to note as it will come back to it later on. Luz and Pedro, they stayed in a two-story house in Philadelphia and right now it was December 15, 1997 and Luz, she had this kind of like a little bit of a frustration. You see, so every time that she would lay down Delamar to rest, when she came in to check on Delamar, she ended up being somewhere else. So say for example, she laid her on the bed to rest and then she'd come in 10 minutes later and check up on her and she was in her cot. So this was kind of like a little bit of an annoyance and she knew why. It was because there was a lot of family members of Pedro constantly over at the house. From cousins to cousins, um, and then just family members of all types. They were just coming in and out of the house. But, you know, Luz just understood that, you know, they, they want to help. But she kind of took it as like, they were thinking that she didn't know what she was doing as a mother. So, she was kind of annoyed. But with that all being said, this was the 10th day that Delamar was alive, right? She just came home from the hospital. It's December 15th at this point, coming closer to the holidays. And Luz put down Delamar for a nap and she went downstairs. And then all of a sudden, everyone in the house started to notice that there was fire, some type of smoke coming from upstairs. So Luz immediately went upstairs and checked to find Delamar and she could not find Delamar. Delamar was not in the room and actually the smoke and the fire was coming from the room where Delamar was in. But one thing she did notice was that the window was open and if you know anything about Philadelphia or wintertime in general, there was no reason why the window would be open, especially during a winter night. That makes no sense. And she clearly remembers never opening that window. But somehow, the window was open and Delamar was not in the room. And so Luz ran back outside, ran down the stairs to check up, okay, maybe somebody else has Delamar. Where are my other two children? The other two children made it out fine, but nobody downstairs, nobody outside knew where Delamar was. And she was freaking out. So she went back into the fire. And now at this point, neighbors were trying to help. So like a neighbor had like their their lawn hose and was trying to pour out the fire through a window that was in the house and also they were trying to like hold back Luz from going in because now the fire has spread 
from the second story down towards the staircase and going into the first story of the house. And so Luz had a lot of fire burns on her face in trying to go back to Delamar but was unfortunately unsuccessful in reaching the second story to go check on Delamar once again. And when firefighters came and paramedics came, they had to restrain her from entering again because she was frantic. She was panicked. She was like, where is her daughter at this point? She didn't know. And this was really, really heartening. Like, especially 10 days ago, she just gave birth to Delamar. And where is her 10-day-old baby? So the one thing that was pretty pretty wicked in my opinion was that the paramedics you know they she's in a frantic mood for like not knowing where her child is her 10 day old child and with her having burns and everything they took her to the emergency care which ended up being the same hospital that she gave birth to Delamar just 10 days earlier so my heart goes out to us like in that moment of course she was frantic the fire chief had declared that the fire had started from some faulty wires in the house. So there was a makeshift extension cord connected to a space heater. Both individually are like fire hazards, but then together, uh, extreme fire hazard. So it kind of makes sense as to why the fire started in the first place. Amongst the inspection, they realized that there was like some, you know, matter of things and they brought it to the like person who does the autopsy, the medical examiner. And the medical examiner is like, nope, that's not a baby. Nope, not at all. That's not a baby. It's not, that's just some things fused together in the fire. Like that's not human remains. And the fire chief then came to the understanding or at least said the statement that Del Mar, the 10 day old baby, was incinerated in the fire. Medically, right? When a baby is as young as 10 days old, they don't have bones. They don't. They have a bunch of cartilage and skin, but they don't have bones. So what the fire chief said is that the baby was incinerated in the fire and it broke Luce's heart as it would break anybody's heart to lose a child but then to especially lose a child in a fire in a place you feel that should be safe your your home you know so even with all that information Luce refused refused to believe that Delmar was dead refused to believe that because something in her soul and something in her heart said that you know Delamar is still alive and she used to tell this to everybody she used to be like I believe my daughter's still alive I believe that she's still alive and you know it took a big strain on her on her marriage with Pedro because even after the, the the couple ended up having two more children together and after the second child they ended up splitting because you know it was just a lot for for him like this would talk about you know starting an investigation but Pedro didn't have the money to to do that type of thing and they were both working very hard to you know sustain a life for the children that they brought into this world and unfortunately, they just didn't have the extra funds to, you know, go after believing what Luz is saying as, as to that, you know, Delamar is still out there. No matter how much, you know, she would say that, people would just look at her and be like, oh, okay. Like, what can you say in that moment, right? With that being said, uh, six years had passed. Now it's 2004 and on January 24th, Lewis went to a family's um, birthday party, like a cousin of a cousin's birthday party, little kid's birthday party. And when she entered the party, you know, she, you know, 
was told you know by her sister you know you gotta get out there you gotta you know socialize you gotta like you know move on with your life right so she's trying right she goes to this party and almost immediately she sees this little girl into the room and this little girl has a striking resemblance to Lucy's little boys and it looks like the same dimples that Delamar had as a baby the cutest little dimples so Luz goes up to her Luz introduces herself Luz says that there's some bubblegum stuck in you know her hair and took a few strands of her hair and put it into a napkin and into her pocket right she saw some new show at the time you know CSI or one of those new shows and she's she knows that like DNA technology is out there. Luz immediately was you know struck by the person claiming to be the mother of the six-year-old girl. Mind you the six-year-old girl her name is Aaliyah, Aaliyah Hernandez and the mother of Aaliyah Hernandez was Caroline Carrera. She was a cousin to Pedro through marriage. And that's how she came to know the family and everything. So after leaving the party, Luz was super upset. Luz was super, you know, like, what do I do? She told Pedro about it. She's like, there's this girl, her name's Aaliyah. I feel in my heart, she's really Delamar. I don't know what to do. And she asked, you know, can we do a DNA test? And she figured out that the cost of the DNA test was actually kind of costly. It was like $800. And frankly, the, the family didn't have the money to put up for, for that type of cost at that moment. She actually went to her state representative, Angel Cruz. And she told him the whole story, the whole about story about how she believed that Delamar was still alive how they never found her remains in the fire how she knows that like in her heart that that person she saw that day Aaliyah truly truly looked like Delamar and something about her story just kept with Angel and Angel you know she he, he brought it up he brought it up to the state and said you know I believe this woman can we do anything about this? Can we, can we just, can we do a DNA test to, to see if this, this is true? And the state was like, hold your horses, Angel. Hold on. Let's do a little bit of investigation into Caroline Cavera before we do that. Because that's a big statement. That's a big statement. So they did so. And what came from that investigation is learning that Caroline Carrera was actually charged for um, embezzlement and also arson. So Caroline, she used to work at this office job handling cash, balancing the books. And she was taking, skimming money off of the books, taking money for herself. So she was stealing from the company, right? Through the grapevine, she heard that the company was going to fire her and was going to be hiring somebody else for her position. So she knew that like they were going to find out that the money's gone, right? So she was immediately like, okay, well, how do I resolve this? Okay, she starts a fire. She starts a fire in the office. And people found out quite quickly that there was a fire and that she started it, right? And, you know, Firefighters were called and the fire was put out. And with all that being said, the company still found out that, you know, she was skimming money off of the books. And then so she was charged for both of those counts. And that meant that, like, she had to serve probation for what she had done. And a lot of those things, such as the arson and then the fact that there was the fire at Pedro's house 
it just just too many of those things aligned together so they said okay well we can try this we can try this we're gonna get Alia Hernandez in and we're gonna you know do a DNA test of her against you know Luz and Luz and also against Caroline and so they did the DNA test right before the DNA test was conducted you know Caroline sprayed something into Aaliyah's mouth and said don't swallow and then she also told her that this is the last time you're gonna see your mommy so that was a red flag because she was trying to throw off the DNA test obviously but in her attempts to throwing off the DNA test um, detectives put Aaliyah into protective services um, out of Caroline's custody while they awaited the results and when the results came in it turned out that Caroline Carrera is not Aaliyah Hernandez's mother. In fact, Aaliyah Hernandez is not Aaliyah Hernandez. Aaliyah Hernandez is Delamar Vera. And Delamar Vera is Luce's daughter. It turned out that she was alive the whole time. And she knew it. She knew it in her heart the whole time that her daughter was alive. She just didn't know like where, what, nobody believed her. And she, she was proven correct that that is her daughter. And Pedro also was confirmed to obviously be the father. So that was their daughter. That was their daughter. They brought in Delamar to um, a room, right? And had had Pedro and had um, Luis there. And immediately when she came in, Luis and Pedro came in, Delamar ducked underneath the table. And they're like, oh. And then she's like, surprise! And then Luz is like, do you know who I am? And Delmar is like, of course, you're my mom. And it was a really good reunion. It did at least two months to try to do this transition of her being, you know, in protective services and then into her real parents' custody. But it was well worth it because, you know, Delamar truly knew that like that was her parents and that her parents really did love her. With Luz and Pedro no longer being together, they actually settled like outside the court and decided that he would have uh, visitation rights and they would um, allow Delamar to stay at um, Luz's house and be in Luce's care all the time since she's six years old. So now going on to what they did with Caroline. Caroline Correa was, when the DNA results were found out, they immediately went to arrest Caroline and she was, she was gone. She had left, she has children of her own and she had left her children. She was on the run, it seemed like. Three days later, she turned herself in and she was arrested. She was charged for kidnapping, arson, assault, um, impeding the safety of a child, also concealing the whereabouts of a child. And in total, she was charged with 13 charges. And she immediately was in denial of it. So going back to that day in 1997, December 15, 1997, Caroline was over that day. She was. Um, at the time, Pedro was like a part-time mechanic and 
um, Kit Pedro had promised to work on her car for her. And it's, I don't know how she got another car in the meantime, but what it was, was that Pedro was working on her car at a different location. She was at his house, Pedro's house, and she had another vehicle, I, I guess a loaner or whatever. She left the place to go towards where Pedro was because, you know, he was finishing up on her vehicle. And she said that, oh, she forgot her purse, right? Which she did. So she came back to Pedro's place, got her purse, and then left and said to Pedro that, oh, there's a fire, broke out your place. So she drove Pedro back to his house where he witnessed the fire and then she left. And that day, she left Philadelphia. She left. She went to New Jersey and she was gone staying in New Jersey for the last few years. Speculations on whether or not she had help during this time is kind of like in question because like how did she get the baby out? Did she start this fire? A lot of things came up in question. And then more information came up before, this is all before any sort of trial or anything, like as the defense and the prosecutor was trying to build evidence, right? They learned that back like 10 years before Delamar was ever born, you know, Caroline, she already had two children of her own and she ties her tubes. She is no longer able to give birth, at least naturally. And she had a new boyfriend in her life, right? And she told him that they're having a baby together. And it was coming closer and closer to the due date of this baby coming. And um, this baby was supposed to be coming, you know, around around the mid-December month of 1997 same time the events happened and you know everyone in the family knew that like Caroline could not be pregnant I mean she's the one that openly told everybody that she tied her tubes so maybe the boyfriend didn't know about this or anything that like she had tied her tubes but he was expecting obviously a baby because she had worked it up the whole time that she was gonna have a kid, she was gonna have a kid, she was gonna have a kid. And she ended up showing up abruptly just a few days after this event happened in December 15, 1997 to her boyfriend's house and she had given him the baby and said you know take care of him take care of her you know i just had her at home three days ago can you take care of her while i go and i settle some more things and then she's gonna come back so she he was like yeah of course so happy that was his baby he he adored adored the baby Aaliyah. he adored her and then once Caroline did settle whatever she had to settle, she came back and that's how six years went by with the, with the three of them plus her other children. When all of that comes to light, like medical examinators believe that she suffered like depression and she also suffered from a condition in which um, women believe that they are pregnant when they are not. And that may have driven her to get a baby herself. With all being said, Caroline was pleading no contest. She claimed that Pedro had handed her the baby. And when Pedro handed her the baby, that meant that she is to take care of the baby. Now remember I said that there was a misunderstanding in the beginning between Luz and Pedro and when they had the baby Delamar and Pedro's name was never on Delamar's birth certificate. When Caroline was stating that, you know, Luz, 
Luz and Pedro, yeah, they're together, but Pedro gave me the baby and I took care of the baby. No, that won't work. Because Pedro is not the father of the child, right? He is, but according to the birth certificate, he is not. So he has no parental rights to give parental rights to another person. Handshake, written form, or anything. He has no parental rights at that moment in time. So with that being said, that was shot out the window. So then Caroline was faced to nine to 30 years in prison, at minimum nine, and at maximum 30 years in prison with parole after. And what ended up happening is that she was sentenced to go to prison and she only served nine years of that prison sentence. And then she also has to stay away from Delamar and have no contact at all to this day you know she still believed that in her heart that like Aaliyah was her baby but i feel like there's a lot a little bit of like back and forth it's like you can say that sure she was like suffering from a medical condition but at the same time she was like say so surprised that Aaliyah was not her actual daughter but at the same time she was also the one that was saying that like maybe she should have a second exam and she did she did do a, a, an individual DNA test just to prove that you know in fact she is not her da actual daughter so it just shows that like maybe she did believe that you know, Aaliyah was her actual daughter when in fact she didn't believe. I don't know, it's it's kind of conflicting because if she did believe that she was her daughter, why would she spray something in her mouth if she did believe that she was her daughter, why would she do an individual test to try to prove that she's her daughter? Like, it... It also doesn't make sense to me. Years later, Delamar Vera is a very happy, young, 20, 23-year-old woman, right? Turning 24 probably very soon. And she's engaged and she's very happy. The story of her story actually got turned into a movie. And the movie helped pay for, you know, um, Delamar's upbringing as well as her family, her other siblings upbringings and I, I believe it's called Little Lost Lives. It's like an HBO movie or something but overall the family is happy and that, that's all that matters at the end of the day and thank goodness you know Delamar did you know survive that fire but you know Caroline robbed a little girl of her youth, her young youth with her family, her family that loved her so much. But yeah, so this is the story of um, Delamar Vera. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, remember to hit that thumbs up button and hit subscribe. I thank you so much for joining me on another video today on courts and crime cases. And I'll see you next time. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you again. Bye.